G'day everyone. Welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about lithium and lithium complex greases, mainly focusing on the thickener technology. We'll talk about lithium soap chemistry, why we use lithium as opposed to any other metal, and the difference between the simple versions of lithium greases and the complex versions of lithium greases. So let's recap. Greases are solid or semi-solid lubricants formed as a dispersion of thickening agents in a liquid lubricant. And that thickening agent is what we're going to concentrate on today. The analogy that we always give is it's a little bit like a sponge where the thickener is the sponge and the base oil is like in this case, the water. So you put a stress on it and it releases the base oil into the application. The oil is what does the lubricating of let's say the bearing, right? And when we release that stress, the oil goes back into the sponge. And so that's why it doesn't leak anywhere and doesn't escape from the bearing. So really important concept to understand. All right, there are plenty of thickener types, right? So generally we divide them into the soaps and the non-soaps. And among the soaps, we have simple and complex and lithium sits on both sides of that. So there are also, for example, simple calcium soaps and complex calcium soaps. But in this case, we're going to talk about lithium. Now, recall that the soap is the salt of a fatty acid. And we get that through an acid-base reaction. So acid plus base makes salt plus water. In this case, it is a metal salt that we are forming, right? So it's a, it's a metal soap. We take with, with lithiums, we take lithium hydroxide and we react it with stearic acid and we form lithium stearate. And that lithium stearate is a simple lithium thickener in its simplest form. All right, so let's look at what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, lithium is bonded to the end and this structure is lithium stearate. Let's um, complete the picture which is that most lithium stearates are actually made with, rather than just plain stearic acid, hydroxy stearic acid, or specifically 12 hydroxy stearic acid. And in that instance, there is a hydroxyl group attached to the 12th carbon in the 18 carbon chain. Now, this is really important because it gives the uh, tail a little bit of polarity, which is gonna influence the intral molecular forces. But if you looked at that structure, what does it look like? We've seen this before in many different types of additives. It looks like a detergent additive where we have a polar head and a non-polar tail. But in this case, we also have a hydroxyl group attached to that non-polar tail, which is itself polar. All right, so then if we looked at a table of all the different strengths and weaknesses, we can see that lithium, that is simple lithium greases, perform relatively well across the board um, and they are pretty favorable compared with another simple soap like a calcium soap for example and that is reflected in global manufacturing trends so if you took a survey from the nlgi and you split it up in a pie chart this is what you get where the lithium simple and the lithium complex soaps make up almost 75 percent of all greases that are used in the world today now, why would that be the case? Why, why is a lithium salt so much better than any other kind of metal salt? Well, one basic reason is that lithium salts are much less water soluble, right? So if you think of um, sodium salts, for example, sea salt, which is sodium chloride, is readily dissolved in water. For that reason, sodium salts um, are actually what we have for hand washing, right? So uh, a bar of soap is most likely a sodium based salt. Um, lithium doesn't have that property, right? It, it is not as soluble in water and that's desirable for a grease because there is always gonna be a certain amount of water contamination in an application, right? So that's got to do with its resistance to water. Beyond that, we don't really have good explanations uh, for why lithium greases perform better than others. Um, however, 
um, I would like you to direct you to this 2018 or 2019 paper. I can't remember what it was. Um, and full credit to the authors here because I think they did some spectacular work. Uh, they actually did um, some, you know, bare bones quantum mechanics and some molecular dynamics and were able to simulate um, a couple of different uh, simple greases. So they took a simple sodium thickener and a simple lithium thickener and they modeled them um, to see you know what happens uh, if you interact lots of these molecules together um, now i should just shout out this was i think a partnership between i think it's drexler university and the exxon Mobil research group um, and i think they did some some fantastic work um, which really showed a couple of things first of all they were actually able to model the interaction of the hydroxyl groups so remember there's a there's a hydroxyl group because it's made from 12 hydroxystyrate, right? So hydroxyl group is on the 12th carbon in the chain. And because they're polar, they tend to interact with each other, right? So that is a way for the different lithium or sodium salt molecules to sort of come together, right? And bond together. So they were able to model that. They were also able to model what happens in the aggregate. So if you have lots of different sodium soap molecules or lots of different lithium soap molecules, how do these like self-organize? And what they found was that the lithium salts actually pack in a much more efficient way than do the sodium salts, right? So I, I think that's, that's really inter interesting that the, the metal in the head of the molecule is able to influence that sort of global structure. Now, why is it that intramolecular forces are so important? Well, if you imagine a whole bunch of these uh, thickener molecules, right, um, they are going to want to bond together, right? They, there is some kind of attractive force that bonds them. And we said that the hydroxyl group really helps us with that. Now, let's think a little bit about what that means for temperature stability and shear stability. So, if you kind of cast your mind back to high school physics, temperature is really related to molecular motion, right? So at cold temperatures, molecules are kind of vibrating in place, but they're do doing so only a little bit. As you increase the temperature, the molecules move a lot more, right? And this is really what melting is, right? So if you have a solid where all the molecules are tightly packed, as you increase the temperature and you give the molecules more energy, eventually they're able to overcome the intramolecular forces and kind of slide past each other. And effectively that's how it, it melts, right? Now, the base oil molecules are held within this structure. And so eventually if the temperature gets so great that the uh, thickener molecules are able to flow past each other and separate, then you are going to lose the base oil. And that's what we mean when a grease gets to its dropping point, right? It releases the base oil because um, it's not able to hold onto it anymore. Now let's think about shear stability. Okay, so as two surfaces are moving relative to each other, maybe this isn't a bearing or, or, or two gear teeth, right? As it moves, it's going to slide these molecules past each other. And again, if that shearing action is strong enough to overcome the intramolecular forces, it's going to shear the actual thickener. All right, so now let's compare lithium simple greases with lithium complex greases. Okay, what you can see from this table is that lithium complex greases have much better performance um, almost across the board um, than do their lithium simple counterparts. So why would that be? Well, first of all, if we go back to our definition of what a soap is, okay, when we try to make a complex grease, we're introducing uh, another step, right? So rather than a stearic acid with a lithium hydroxide, what we're actually going to do is introduce a comp complexing agent, right? And this means that the finished product quality is dependent both on the manufacturing process and on the actual complexing agent that's used. So there are an array of different complexing agents that can be used. Usually they're a diacid, right? So a, a, 
a carbon chain with two acid functional groups. Um, however, there are variants on that, right? And some of them are proprietary technologies to uh, different lubricant manufacturers. And that can really affect the bulk properties of the complex lithium thickener. So let's just look at this as a, a in a very simple way. If we introduce a complexing agent, what that does is introduce another molecule that branches between two other thickener molecules. So it kind of would look more like this, right? So it's almost like you've got um, rungs on a ladder. So if you think about this in terms of shear stability and cast your mind also to temperature stability, now, as we move two surfaces relative to each other, the intramolecular bonds are much stronger and this thickener is much less likely to shear. And that's why complex greases are much more shear stable and generally have higher dropping points than do the simple greases. Right? So hopefully um, this relatively simple explanation has given you a picture into why simple and complex greases both cost different amounts, right? because there's an, another step in the manufacturing, but also um, as to why their bulk properties are so different. All right, hope that's been helpful. Um, really important topic because lithium greases are so common in the market today. Um, obviously, they're challenged um, by availability of lithium. They're having to now compete with battery manufacturers. And so the next few years will be interesting to see if we see new thickener technologies emerge. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.